live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us, America. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we talk about your life and your money. It is a free call at 888-825-5225. Thank you for being with us. Shauna is on the line in Indianapolis to start this hour. Hi, Shauna. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, My question is, how would I balance wanting to be a stay-at-home mom with having some pretty crippling student loan debt? Mm. How much is your crippling student loan debt? Well, mine is $192,000. Are you a doctor or a lawyer? Uh, Doctor of pharmacy, yes, sir. Okay, good. All right, so you can make $100 to $150 a year? Uh, Yes, sir. Okay. What about your husband? Are you married? I am. How much debt does he have? Sorry, uh, he makes about thirty-three thousand a year. And how much debt does he have? Is he bringing to the table? Uh, Like forty-five thousand. Okay. So, So to all you aspiring pharmaceutical students, you need to listen to this call really carefully, because Shauna, what you were told and what you believed was, oh, it's no problem to go $200,000 in debt to become a pharmacist because I'm going to make a lot of money. Right. Oops. Yes, oops. Now I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Yes. And that child that made that decision that was 19 years old to go $200,000 in debt, you want to go back there and kick that child's butt now. (laughs) Yes, so true. What's happening that's making you say, I want to stop what I'm doing right now and become a stay-home mom? Are you pregnant? Do you have a two-year-old? What's the situation? Yes, we have a two-year-old, our only child so far, and Mm -hmm. we would like to have several more. Mm -hmm. What if you, okay, I'm going to tell you what I would do. If it were me, I would try to stick this out for two more years and work my butt off and get this debt cleaned up. And then I would feel peace about staying at home, expanding the family, and having a little bit more freedom there. You don't have trouble. What do you make? Uh, historically, yeah, somewhere in the range of you know seventy to a hundred thousand a year, just depending on like part time work and stuff like that. I thought Dave said between one and two, one hundred and two hundred thousand. I said no, between one and one hundred and fifty. So you're low on the spectrum, really. Um, yes, yeah, pharmacy work oh, before wow. the pandemic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that, that's okay. The So the good news is you can pick up, as you already know, part-time pharmacy work, like ER work and that kind of stuff. And you're probably going to have to do that uh, if your husband makes 45000 to survive. Yeah. Average household income in America is 71000 Yeah. And so if you want to live on forty you you're going to be at about, you know, you're approaching half of average. I think we call that lower income. What is and your you want to raise three do? kids while you have a pharmacy degree. So you're probably using that pharmacy degree for the rest of your life unless your husband gets his um, in some way, maybe part time. But uh, unless he gets his career really geared up. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. What's he oh, do yeah. now? He is a like a remote sales rep. What's what's the projection for him? What's it looking like over the next two, three years? Well, so he's actually trained in chaplaincy, but we moved to where we live now for ministry purposes. So he's been, you know, he hadn't been able to find a chaplain job recently. Mm-hmm. So basically right now we're sitting at, you know, 30, 30 something thousand, 40 something thousand. But trained as a chaplain, he could make, you know, starting at 50 and go up from there. We're just still looking into him being able to find that kind of yeah. role in this area. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing. Um The bad news is you have to pay for the decisions of the 19-year-old you. Yes. Mathematically, there's no way to get out of that. I'm sorry. I wish it wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. And I'm not mad at you for that. But you you really don't have mathematically. The arithmetic tells us you don't have a lot of choices. You're going to work really hard and live on nothing for at least two or three more years to get this mess cleaned up. Agreed? Yeah. 
Oh yes, probably many. Yeah. More. <laughs> well, I, no, I think I think you could do it in that period of time. I, I think mean, so if you too. throw, you know, let, let's consider this. You think you're going to reduce your household income to about ninety at some point if you did a thirty or forty thousand dollar part time, and he gets up to sixty. So that's like sure. five years from today. Does that sound right? Uh, yeah, that, that and so let's awesome. live on 90 and go make 200. Well, that's another 100 to throw at student loans. You'll be done in two, two and a half, three years. Yeah. But both of y'all got to get it in gear because this is the time to do it when they're little bitty. That's right. Because they don't even know. They don't even know. Yeah. I kept my son's two-year-old. He was gone for a week. He never noticed his parents were gone. <laughs> So now, true. granted, granted, he was at Mimi's house, which is somewhat like heaven. But um, <laughs> you, you eat anything you want, you do anything you want. But because um, mm-hmm. that's the grandmother spoiling technique. And so, uh, but yeah. But aside from that, I mean, they really don't. I, I'm not. I'm not a child development expert, but they'll live while you go crazy for a short period of time, so that when they're six, you can be available. Yeah. And I think I think there's a path here that gets you there, that gives you hope, and it is a light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train, but it involves a very <laughs> intense next 24 to 36 months on both you and your husband's part in order for you to be able to go to part-time. Yeah. And um, I think you can make 30 to 40 part-time some weekend ER stuff or some even evenings or whatever that won't destroy your motherhood plan, don't you? Yeah, that, that definitely seems possible. Yeah, that's your long-term play to supplement your husband's uh, career goals. And, you know, because yeah. the, the, you, y'all going to have to make it, it sounds like, on long-term, on 80, 90, 100, somewhere in there. Because uh, we're not yeah. going to have your 100 if, unless you're working right. full-time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. Right. It'll be worth it. That's what I can tell you, Sha- uh, yeah. Shauna. It's going to be worth it if you do this now. Yeah, I, I, I would go completely bananas for a short period of time to get your life back Mm -hmm. yeah to get it back from that 19 year old decision so um so moms and dads when you say oh it's okay and school counselors oh it's okay see the other thing that i've had happen is much more she has a a an earnest real thing yeah but we've had a lot of other calls that weren't as sweet a situation right the child they have a baby the child has uh is a tremendous special needs situation Mm -hmm. where mom literally or somebody's got to be there yeah they don't have choice Mm -hmm. and yet they're looking at the student loan debt that was made on the basis on the auspices that oh it's okay everything's gonna be all right you're gonna make a lot of money yeah well you don't know what this thing called life comes up and smacks you in the head And nobody tells people that when they're 19 anymore. So y'all need to tell these 19-year-olds, stop it. Because they may want to make different choices later. And yet she has a master in her life called debt. The borrower is slave to the lender. Man, I hope she can do it. She She can can do do it it in her situation. But man, her, her situation is a lesson for America. Yes, it is. To listen to. This is The Ramsey Show. Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Our question of the day comes from Neighborly. 
your hub for home services. Spring is here, and Neighborly can help you with your home and your yard and keep it all in top shape with the grounds guys, Mosquito Joe, Lawn Pride, Molly Maid, and more. So spend time and more time enjoying your home, not working on it. Uh, go to Neighborly.com and check out the service pros in your area. This is a great company. It is. And today's question of the day comes from Jonathan in the Netherlands. He says, we really don't feel the necessity or the urgency to follow the beans and rice style of baby step two. I can imagine that it might feel nice to have no debt and we have no intention of getting further into debt. However, I don't feel it's worth living on rice and beans for three years to pay off $43,000 of student loans as soon as possible. As we're young, we're a young family, we're making $6,500 a month, and now we can use our income and savings to buy a second hand bigger car, make a garden. Uh, make our garden a bit nicer and later in life we'll have more to spare to pay off those loans anyway what are your thoughts on this and would it be uh, what would be the benefit of still following the baby steps more rigidly that's a really good question and you know what Dave I hear this a lot I think a lot of people are like why do I have to be so urgent why do I have to be so intense and I look at it a couple of different ways Um, number one the series of steps that we follow. Um, This is a guy, you know, Jonathan, I don't mean any harm, but you're kind of just an ish guy, right? You're doing what you want to do. You're really not on our plan and that's fine. You don't have to be, it's your prerogative. But the way the steps work is you're doing them consecutively and the first three three, you're doing them with intensity so that you can get to the final four, which is really that wealth building area. So there's, um, some method to this madness, but this kind of goes back to what we've talked about before. Um, There is urgency because how many, I mean, I think about my grandmother who would say, you know, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And there is something to be said for that. I think a lot of people just coast through because they think, hey, you know, this is my plan. If I just go out like this, it's going to go, you know, check off the boxes like that. But you really don't know what's going to come your way. You know, God willing, everything goes fine. And, you know, you, you'll keep that income and everything will be perfect and everybody's healthy. and every, But you don't know that. And I think that you've got to live each day to the fullest. You've got to do the best that you can with each day that you're given. And when you've got debt, pay it off. You got $43,000 of debt and you make a fine income. It doesn't have to take you three years to pay this off. You could honestly pay it off a lot faster than that. And at the end of the day, it John, all... Jonathan, what she's trying to say is your plan sucks. It sucks. It sucks because it's not going to work. People have been trying to do the crap you're talking about for 50 years and it doesn't work. You can't sort of kind of get out of debt and ever get out of debt. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. It's just actual that you can't find any proof text in the marketplace of someone who wanders along and lollygags and sticks with it and gets out in 10 years but plants his little garden. <laughs> well, give me a break. Call the wambulance. You know, seriously, this is ridiculous. This is just somebody who doesn't want to sacrifice no, to win. It, well, that, period. Yeah, that, but you're not going to win, okay? Because there's no middle ground with this. D- really? Now, I've been doing this a long time. It's not just that you're not doing our stuff. So please do not follow the baby steps. Please do not tell people you're doing Ramsey. No, he's not doing Ramsey. Because Ramsey's. I don't want to be insulted by your abject failure. And I don't want my brand damaged by it. Okay, just because it's not going to work. Here's the reason, Jonathan. All right. The thing works like this. If you don't really with great intensity focus on a dramatic change in behavior where you have been going in the wrong direction, you will never change the behavior. We're not asking you to live on beans and rice the rest of your life or to or even live, in a ca- years. live in a cave and collect lint and only come out on tri- triple coupon Thursday. But what you're doing will not actually work because it's not sustainable, because it has absolutely no energy. I just think I'm going to kind of wander. I'm going to get a nice house, and it's all going to work out. No, it's not, Jonathan. No, it's not. Because you're going to get your freaking head taken off by life, and you're going to look up... 15, 16 years into your little marriage and go, 
dad gum we are stupid people Mm -hmm. we are still treading water Mm -hmm. and ask all these people that are 45 and 50 years old that tried to wander out and then they found us and in 36 months they got out of debt and they do their debt-free scream they'll tell you Mm -hmm. they'll tell you your little plan sucks because it does. It won't work is why it sucks. And when right? you're lukewarm like that, you say, I have no intentions of getting back into debt. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Absolutely you definitely will. Because will. you're not committed to the idea. The the idea of where debt freedom will take you, which is into wealth and into a whole nother realm of generosity, then you can even grasp right now is not appealing to you as much as your garden. Give me a break. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> will not work, Jonathan. Will not work. So you can go do what you want to do, but please do not associate my name with it, because I don't want to be tied to your failure. And you go, I tried that Ramsey stuff, and it doesn't work. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Because we know that there's a high probability you are never going to get out of debt unless you attack it like your dadgum life depends on it. Mm-hmm. You got to get so fired up and wired up that you're character shifts your neuroplasticity moves in the way your brain works where when you see debt you recoil Mm -hmm. when you pull up next to a nice car at a traffic light you now no longer go oh that's a nice car you go that fool's got payments yeah well you know he right now he's stuck in comfort his life he feels comfortable he says i don't think there's any need to get uncomfortable to change this i'm cushy the greatest enemy the the greatest enemy of excellence is not bad yes. things. The greatest enemy of excellence is the okay. Yep, just fine. I'm okay. It's just fine. I'm okay. That's so I'm true, okay. Dave. No, you're not. You suck. Mm-hmm. You're not okay. Your plan sucks. Yeah. It's, it's pitiful, and it's not going to work. Debt is like riding a motorcycle. It's not if you crash. It's when you crash, because you will crash. Remember that. Ooh. Why are you going to get motorcycles? I'm just saying. It's not if, it's when. George, Georgian horses, you and motorcycles. <laughs> Look, oh you God. won't get me on a it's bike. It's not a matter of if you crash, but when you crash. That's debt. Yeah. They call them coma, mo- coma, mo- co- coma mobiles or something. Oh, gosh. That's uh, even worse than what I said, yeah, Dave. I just, I just, I <laughs> my wife told me I could have a motorcycle, but she wouldn't be there. So there you go. That's there how that go. works. I just got so the, you you, the you and Sharon. You and Sharon. We, I there think we have a lot in common, me uh, and Sharon. Yeah, no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Up next is Andy in Phoenix. Hey, Andy, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I'm in baby step six, which I'm like three months away from being done with. Good. My job, my job, um, currently is a couple weeks starting a new rule change. They now are insisting that we all have credit cards to pay for our expenses. When we how were, how were you paying for them? Uh, the company was paying for them. And so now they want you to carry debt for them? Well, wow, that's interesting. So what it is is we put it on the credit cards and then we file paperwork and then they pay us back. I know. The corporate expense account on the person's credit card is the biggest con ever sold to employees in American history. Yeah. And and these guys, because this big old company can't handle their own credit card. Instead, they need to get you to borrow money to travel on their behalf. Right. And, you know, when I first started Baby Step 2, I paid off 28000 in credit cards. How much are you spending so, every month on it? Uh, well, right now, the company's paying for it, but it will probably end up being right around 5000 a month. Yeah, put, put, se- put 7000 in a separate checking account, run a debit card on it. Because when you're running a debit card on it and, it's, and you're realizing it's your own money, you'll never use it for anything except reimbursables. Mm-hmm. And reimbursables will always put the money back in the account. And you can travel the next month, reimburse, get the money back in the account, travel the next month, and you're not going to get burned that way. But this is a complete corporate scam. Has been for decades. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. 
but something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 40% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Thank you for joining us, America. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Stephanie is in Lubbock, Texas. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Hi Dave. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, forgive me. I'm nervous. Um, it's okay. But, We've so never lost a patient. I'm, okay. <laughs> so I'm 32 years old. I've got. I'm a single mom of a two-year-old. I'm living with my family, working as a server, trying to go back to school. Um, I've got $22,000 saved, um, partially selling a vehicle. Um, I still have one truck. It's, I owe 17, five on it. I have student loans of $32,000 and I'm, so I'm just not sure which direction to go. I, um, how do you find yourself here? So my husband decided he didn't want to be with me more after, uh, my son was born six months um, after he was born. So. Wow. I'm sorry. How long were you married? Um, three years. You getting child support? Together for nine. So we, I am. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Wow. I just feel bad for living with my family. I'm trying to no, go No, you back don't. No, 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 no. You, you, you are who should be living with your family right mm -hmm. this second. Not forever, but for a short period of yeah. time. This is called a safety net, not a hammock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, your mom and dad are good people. That's what they should do. And you should not you should accept that right now. Because you would do that for your baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she got back on her feet. Now, we got to have a long-term plan. That's not that. Mm -hmm. But for the short term, this, so, is a, this is a time of healing and resetting and getting getting mm -hmm. going again. So um, can I ask you some practical questions? Mm -hmm. So what are you receiving in child support? And what are About you earning? About $700. Earning? Okay. So about $700 a month. Um, so this last term, I decided to go back to school because I didn't know what to do. I was just like, I need to be able to make more money. So mm -hmm. I was like, um, maybe a nurse that would take a shorter time. I would rather not be a nurse. I would rather be, I have multiple friends that are occupational therapists, but that would take like five years. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel guilty for doing that. And they that. don't make that much but, more than nurses. Mm -hmm. But um Exactly. Yeah. So I was just like, I feel guilty, but in the long run, I'm like, okay, three more years, but it would give me a better family life. But I'm looking into, I mean, I'm, I've got FAFSA, I've got the grants, but after grad, undergrad, they don't cover, you know, it's like I would have to rely solely on scholarships or savings. So I'm just like, it's kind of up in the air. It's like, is that a bad decision okay. um, to do that? It's not a bad decision. It feels a little bit like you're doing this only for money. I, I like health. I like science. I love being in the healthcare world. Okay. All right. That's good. I didn't realize that. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I you're in a desperate situation mm -hmm. that, that you've landed in, and you have to be careful. I do when I'm in those situations to not be – to not make decisions based on desperation because they're never good decisions. So, you know, yeah. the question is, the way I always ask myself is way out there. So how old are you? 
32. Okay, so when we're sitting with the 42-year-old Stephanie and she's doing the thing that changed her life and made her Mm -hmm. a good amount of money for her and her baby, and she feels confident, secure, in control, and happy to go to work every day, what is 42-year-old Stephanie doing? I would rather be an OT. Okay, then we need to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and maybe a nursing degree is a step towards becoming an OT because you certainly could use a lot of that training and even the class, the, even the transcript to step over into OT, correct? I thought about that. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah cause you need some, paths. you need some money in, in 12 to 14 months. You're not even going to get that with the nursing track, right? In 12 to 14 months. I'm just, I'm making that up, but I mean, Oh, how long are you going to live there? I, uh, that's my big question. <laughs> Doesn't need to yeah. be a question. That's where your stress is coming from. Yeah. Stress doesn't come from hard things. Stress comes from not knowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of unknowns in this equation. So I'll tell you what I tell folks to do. And what I do is whenever there's a lot of ideas circulating in my head, I, I literally go in with a pen and a pad and a pen and I just start writing down the plan. I write down a column Mm -hmm. of all my options. I write down the pros and cons and I sort it out on paper. And a lot of times it's going through, you know, one whole sheet, tearing that one off and then, you know, taking what makes sense from that one to the next sheet and writing that out. And then before you know it, you've got your step by step. Okay, here's what I'm going to do first. Here's what I'm going to do second. Here's how much money I need for this, for that, because you've got a lot of big things on your plate. And I think that's what's stressing you out somewhere. Yeah, you got, and you have at least two, or if not three, stages at least to mm-hmm. this plan. The forty-two-year-old's the final stage, mm-hmm. or the next to final mm-hmm. stage. You follow me? But the early stage is okay. How can I make more money today, doing mm-hmm. anything that is legal and moral that I'm not ashamed of mm-hmm. uh, today? And uh, that's the short term, because you know, if you suddenly doubled your income right now, it would change your outlook. Yeah. And that's just doing anything. I mean, even if it's something you never were going to do over a 10 year period of time, but for now it gets the wolf away from the door. And then that sets you up for building a sustainable household while you execute the long-term plan. So we'll help mm-hmm. you with all of that. Uh, I'm going to give you everything in sight because somebody needs to walk with you. You got you got ha- you got hit here hard. So um, number one, we're going to put you through Financial Peace University. Have you ever done that yet? I have not, but I've read your book. Okay. Well, you need to go through the, the Financial Peace University because it's going to it's the system that makes you do everything. Like you're going to sell this truck. A seventeen five truck okay. does not fit in your life. It's too expensive. Okay. You need a cheap car right now. Because you're broke, living at home, trying to recover from a divorce with a baby. And 17.5 yeah. truck is like rich people stuff. You're not there yet. Yeah. You're going to be there again someday. But right now, this truck is too big a problem. Because, I mean, for, okay. it's got, what, $650 payment? About a 300 Really? 350 For 62 years? Okay. Wow. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, anyway, yeah, the good. Okay. But anyway, yeah, we need to get out of that and get in the cheapest possible thing mm-hmm. that will get you to your goals because we're not care about what we're driving right now. What we're, not, what we're doing right now is piling up money to go hit the goals. Yeah. Okay. That's Financial mm-hmm. Peace University. I'm also going to give you Ken Coleman's book, From Paycheck to Purpose, and his career assessment which is a thing to take about 20 minutes. It's going to help guide you in your career because I'm still a little bit afraid. You like science, you like healthcare, but I'm not positive. I'd love for you to find a way, a path through your, your, your gifts and calling uh, that mm-hmm. gets you to more money faster than these long-term education plays are going to get you to. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to wait five or six years to start playing this out. That's bothering me with what you're, the things you're proposing. I, I, want, I want your life to get better faster than that for you. And so we love you, and we want you to win. So you hang on. We're going to give you a Ken Coleman's book. We're going to give you the assessment, and we're going to give you Financial Peace University, all of the above. Because you got to get – boy, this is one where the career is a big deal. It is. I do feel like there's something that she can do in the short term to really – 
change her income and to really improve that. It's not the long term play. She's not afraid of work. No, not at all. Being a server is about as hard a work as there is. No, but doing earning a little bit more is going to help her start to put all of this into clear focus and see, okay, how am I going to, because she can get out of this debt way quicker than she thinks because of the truck. And then she's going to be able to start saving up to move out and then exactly. saving up to do the education piece. So I'm not worried about her current student loan debt. I don't know. I didn't even spend her 22,000 yet. Yeah. Cause I might want to spend that on this short term education play yeah. to go get a couple of certifications of some kind. Absolutely. To go get a steady mm -hmm. that's paying 40 or 50 and I can get back out on my own, get me a little apartment, yeah. get started again. Then I'll start paying off that debt and start working your long term yep. plan. That's right. Getting rid of that. But she's still, key, she's still just reeling from the emotions of this. And that makes her just a human being. Yeah. We all have that. Yeah. Ouch. She's doing great, though. She's going to she's gonna see her way out of this. When we were broke, I used to make a list. What makes me money by Friday? And that's what I worked on because mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. to have money by Friday. I feel that. This is The <laughs> Ramsey Show. heard me say this if you've been listening for very long that Ramsey did the Ramsey research team did the largest detailed in-depth study of millionaires ever done in North America we studied 10,167 of them in-depth very careful research methodology to where there's no question about the data point being if you disagree with the conclusions of this data you're what's known as wrong yeah we discovered the top five careers. One of these is always controversial. Here they are. Number one career among millionaires, engineer. Number two, accountant. Number three, teacher. Number four, management. Number five, attorney. Medical doctors didn't even make the top five. They came in at number six. Teacher, 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 you can't be a... Listen, I, this is not an opinion, and it's not a feeling, and it's not an indictment of the fact that you didn't make it. I'm just telling you, of all the millionaires that we studied, the third most common <laughs> occupation to appear in the research was teacher. That's just a statistical fact. It's not a statement of what you make or your friend makes. It's just the deal. So, not surprising. Because actually, all four, five of those are process-oriented careers. They find a proven process, and they use it. Every, all five of those. And that's what, it, that's what building wealth is, a proven process. So in the best-selling book, Baby Steps Millionaires, we take a deep dive into investing, wealth building, and busting through the barriers, like lies, like believing lies, that keep people from becoming a millionaire. So... Backed by popular demand, Baby Steps Millionaires, and almost all of our number one best-selling books are all $10 right now at RamseySolutions.com. By the way, the Baby Steps Millionaires book, number one bestseller, has the uh, white paper of the study in the back of it as an appendix. So you get the white paper with it in one deal. We used to sell that separately for $10. Now the whole stink of deals $10. So yeah, RamseySolutions.com. Hit the store before this deal's over, and it's just about over. Robert's in Columbus, Ohio. Hey, Robert, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Sure, what's um, up? My, my wife and I are having a friendly discussion. Uh, we're both retired. We retired about a year ago. So we're having a discussion on buying a sort of expensive new versus used vehicle and we both have valid points and i told her i would uh run it by day and see what he says okay I think, uh, so how much is the, the truck news, he says we oh well, it's not a truck it's, it's not a, a truck okay i thought whatever. you almost said truck okay sports. what what is it no it's it's a it's a lexus sports coupe uh Ooh, probably sweet. 
Probably that's a great car. About, I drove that car the other day. That's a great car. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the uh, so, what, yeah, what is it? How much is it? Seventy or eighty? No, 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 no. We're looking. It's uh, LC five hundred. We're probably looking about one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, you loaded it up. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's a nice car. All right. And so, what's your net worth? Well, that's a thing. I think we can well afford it. No. What's uh, your we, net we're, worth? Uh, a little over $5 million. Buy the car. Okay, well, it's not a matter of buying a car. It's new versus used. Buy new. And <laughs> thank you. Let me, tell you, you. let me tell you how I decide that, okay? Here's okay. the thing. Here's how you can tell if your emotions have caught up with your wealth. You use ratios. Okay. Ratios. Okay. All right? And so you have a $5 million net worth. You're spending one hundred thousand dollars or so on a car as right. a ratio if you set fire to that car with no insurance and it disappeared and turned into a vapor <laughs> your life doesn't even blink now you have a 4.9 million dollar net worth whoop de doop de <laughs> all right I'll that's the ratio okay now let's change it around <laughs> let's say you had a three hundred thousand dollar net worth Right. Now that car goes up into a vapor. You've destroyed one third of your net worth. That's not a ratio that's acceptable. That's stupid. Right. That's how you use ratios. And that's how you look at it. Like I got a buddy that makes 15 million a year. He pulled up the other day in a car that was 460,000 bucks. And I'm like, my mind can't even get around that. But it's a weed car. Oh, my God. It's fabulous. <laughs> I bet. It had a crystal ashtray. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. So, Robert. Who's going to put yeah, ashes in that car? Yeah. I know. Right? <laughs> Are you more excited that you won the argument or that you get the car? <laughs> no. I'm more excited because I like being right. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, that's well, the, the, the reason. She's it's like, not. My know, point is it's not, it's not foolish. Yeah. The amount yeah, of depreciation it, difference in the new or used in this car in your situation as a ratio is not foolish. Okay. So it shouldn't even be up for discussion then. Yeah, it's not, not with your ratios, again. But if you okay. pull the numbers down and tighten up those ratios, right. then it's different. Because right. here's the other thing. You guys are highly generous people, aren't you? Yes. And so you give away a lot more than we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, sure. a lot. <laughs> That's how you get to where you are. Yeah. What'd you do for a living, by the way? Uh, she was in the medical field, and I owned a small business. That both did, you're understating both of those tremendously. Okay. Very well done. <laughs> Very well done. So, He's the art of the understatement, this guy. Yeah. So I have a question that I think that folks listening would have. When does, I mean, obviously in his case, his net worth is fine. Like he can buy a brand new car. Mm -hmm. At what point does the rule that we have here um, that we say, we don't want your things that go, that have an uh, engine in them. We don't want them to be more than 50% of your take home pay. Yearly. When your net worth is so large that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. even matter. Yeah. Because your take home pay is a good gauge until you've got like but if you've got a five or a ten I mean, million dollar net worth yeah now we're talking about what percentage because the reason we tell people that is you're going to lose so much value yeah so if you make seventy thousand dollars a year and you got fifty thousand dollars worth of car sitting in the driveway you're going to be broke your whole life mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the definition of i want to be middle class my whole life that's true right and so why because fifty thousand is going to turn into twenty thousand yeah. in two years get split okay and you can, so you're going to lose thirty thousand bucks, and you make seventy. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to lose thirty thousand bucks when you make seventy. But let's say you made seventy, but you had a ten million dollar net worth. Now you can afford to lose thirty thousand sure. bucks because you're retired and you're living on almost nothing, and you just chose to. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you've, you know, if you got a five million dollar net worth, your income, if it's at ten percent, is half a million dollars a year. That's true. You may not be using the income. Mm -hmm. It may be rolling point. back into the investment. You might not be cashing out your retirement. You may be letting it grow. Right. But your income created by that balance sheet is larger than your income. That is true, whether your you're income. actually pulling that or not. Yep. So that's the thing to keep in mind. That's why you'll reach a point that net worth supersedes that. And, you know, the other thing that comes into this is the spiritual discussion. Mm -hmm. Christians should never... Because we all know that all Christians should drive a 10-year-old Camry. I sure hope not. Because that's holiness. 
because you should never have anything nice. What? Now, I don't, I you don't know You should not be that. out. You should not be out of proportion with your generosity. Yeah. With your net worth, and you know, like I got a buddy of mine that's worth about three billion. Wow. He's a huge believer. They give away three to five hundred million a year, wow. and he's he's a known figure in mm-hmm. the Christian world, mm-hmm. business guy. Okay, not a minister, business mm-hmm. guy. And he bought a hundred and eighty thousand dollar, hundred sixty thousand dollar Mercedes. Nothing. And which, as a ratio, is like most people buying a biscuit. Yeah. But these narrow-minded people that are oversaved start trashing him on social media for buying an, a, a car that is a very small percentage of his world. Meanwhile, they're deeply in debt and forty-eight thousand pounds overweight, called gluttony. And yet they're managing to call out somebody else. Ooh, Dave, you're getting them right now, Well, Dave. I mean, call out somebody else. Just keep calling out somebody else. Uh-huh. And for you snowflakes out there, everyone that disagrees with you is not a narcissist that is gaslighting you. You're just a wuss. <laughs> so we'll just put that right in the whole thing there. That's Let's right. help you with that. Just put just that go ahead in your and pipe get it and smoke all it. mixed in there and smoke it while you're at it. This <laughs> is The Ramsey Show. What's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jessica starts this hour in Salt Lake City. Hi, Jessica. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. It's a pleasure to speak to you. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? Oh, everything. Life. You know, it happens. We have a question for you. My husband and I, we are wanting to buy a house for our growing family, but we have some money set aside. Um, And I was raised to buy an investment property before we buy a house for ourselves. You were raised wrong. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. (laughs) Do we buy a house for ourselves first or an investment property, or do we split the cash half and half and put it down the middle? Buy a house for yourself first. Okay. That's what we were wondering. What do you have saved? We have about $300,000. Excellent. Very good. So what price range? Home. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where we're at, and that's what we were looking for. Do we, If we put all the money down for an investment or a house. Yeah. I mean, what price range? Home. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, we were, you know, it, it kind of, we haven't like looked too far into it. Um, where we're at in Salt Lake, I feel like a normal size house, like for a solid family of like a four bedroom house starts at about between seven and eight hundred thousand dollars. Just depends on which street you're on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, how much do you guys make a year? Um, about a hundred thousand dollars. Good for you. Okay, let me yeah. let me back back walk the why okay. behind our answer. Okay. Okay. Tell me. So personal residence is a key element paid off of the first one to five million dollars of net worth that people build. Okay. Not investment property. Stati- okay. Statistically speaking. Okay. Personal okay. residence that creates a reasonable standard of living, not necessarily opulence, but certainly not, you know, um, living in a camping trailer out back of Ma's house. Okay, that's not what we're doing. But a a personal residence that gives you a reasonable, sustainable level of standard of living creates stabilization in your relationships. Your health is better. Your career has more of a tendency to prosper. 
the budget prospers because the largest line item in everyone's personal budget until they're very wealthy is their home. Okay. And so, uh, so when you get you. control of the largest line item and stabilize it by buying a home and or, you know, paying cash for it or not, uh, sure. but getting it paid off very, very soon, you okay. have a higher tendency to prosper because your health is better, your relationships are better, your career blossoms. There's tons of data around home ownership that indicates those things. Okay. So another question for you, because... Um, we're looking into buying a house or we only, so we live in my parents' townhome right now and we only spend a thousand dollars a month on that. I also would feel guilty going out and spending almost $3,000 on a mortgage compared to where I'm only spending a thousand dollars a month in rent, but I'm only renting. It's not an asset. Exactly. Okay. So you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year and you yeah. buy a home with $300,000 down and then you right. map out how quickly we can pay off that home. Okay. And then that, because okay. you're, you're probably going to do it in five years. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I wish. I, no, I, I really so. do. That's I mean, let, let, like, okay, so um, probably seven. Okay. Well, it might be five, be between five and seven, but you're making a hundred. And, of course, you're not, five years from now, you're not going to be making a hundred. Mm -hmm. On average, okay. your income will go up. Okay. Yeah, that's true. And, and our... our and we're going to throw everything we've get that we've got extra money at this mortgage because the goal becomes to pay it off. Because when you get the house paid off and now you're making 150 and it's five or six years from now, um, yeah. you're still very young to save up and pay cash for your first investment property. And you're going to do extremely yeah. well. Oh, I hope so. I want to. That's my goal. That's, yeah. I mean, we all want to be rich and famous, right? I mean, yeah. maybe not famous, but. Um, <laughs> Jessica, you don't have any other debt, do you? No, no okay. debt. I was going to say that three hundred grand is about if all of our funds put together, including our mutual funds, our our personal IRA, our emergency fund. That's everything. Yeah, well, you got to you uh, cannot use retirement money for this down payment. Okay, be no, silly. no, no, no. And, we, and you have to have your emergency fund set aside. So you're not right. going to put down quite three hundred grand. But, um, but I'm going to tear into this house, and, and mm -hmm. because you have this big goal of a paid for house and then a paid for investment property. Yeah, and let's hit this again real quick because I don't know how much money she has outside of the retirement money mm -hmm. that she was talking mm -hmm. about using. So let's be really clear, Jessica, about that. Don't touch those retirement funds and make sure that that's going to change the equation a little bit for you. So make sure that whatever you purchase, it's no more than 25% of your take-home pay. And, and of course, and you're doing that 15-year fixed rate mortgage. And given this discussion, I mean, Salt Lake is not a hyper cheap no. environment but it's also not a hyper expensive environment yeah, yeah, so yeah. given this discussion you may want to actually look at 500 instead of 700 yeah absolutely i just depending on how much you're putting as a downstroke yeah, and yeah. because again you know well this is my forever house there's no such thing except heaven <laughs> there is no forever house about the only thing you can count on is you're gonna move that's right you know, I just don't know how quick or where, mm -hmm. but you're going to move. I always say forever home. That's a slippery slope. When people say things like forever home for me, Dave, that means they're giving themselves permission to spend more. That's I've, what that phrase a, means to me. I have a me. forever wife and I have a forever Jesus. Nothing else I got's forever. Everything else goes away. <laughs> it does. Because I told Sharon, I mean, we've been married 41 years. I told her if she leaves, I'm going with her. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Guys, one of the things about personal finance, and it's illustrated in the answer to that question, is that it's as much personal as it is finance. And if you try to correct things that have anxiety and spiritual principles and relationship issues, you try to manage those things with math they never work. So a stable home presence, a castle for you to come home to after you've been working hard, a safe haven, mm -hmm. an emotionally calm place that's good to reset and go fight again another day has tied with it actual income. Absolutely. That's absolutely the case. And, you know, I think that people, I think that's why, Dave, so many people want to get to that step so quickly even if it means getting to it the wrong way yeah you know, we know it but we don't know why we know it mm -hmm. we kind of know it in our knower that's right yeah d deep down deep yeah. down in our knower yeah that, that's <laughs> exactly right but yeah it, it's and you're right it can cause people to short circuit it but mm -hmm. 
I, I think sometimes we're always going, I got to buy a house because houses go up in value and I don't want to be left out of the market. Yeah, that's See, fair. that's all math. Mm-hmm. And that's not considering that your stress level goes down so your your medical condition is better mm-hmm. it versus not being there. Because, you know, when you got to deal with all this other stuff, man, something that's else. True. That's true. This is The Ramsey Show. a home is one of the biggest decisions of your life. You need a partner like Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country and they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Churchill works with you to build a mortgage the Ramsey way. One that doesn't bust your budget, sets you up for financial success and helps you get out of debt faster. Go to churchillmortgage.com today and get started. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. So, Jade, you're doing your own Financial Peace University class, and you're not by yourself. Affirmative. I and Rachel Cruz are also doing a class. Hers is, both of ours have started. They started May 8th, but all the personalities are doing classes. So you could go to a Financial Peace University class with Dr. John Deloney. Yes. And you should. His class is actually coming up next. Uh, and you should sign up for his class. And then after or that. George Camel. Yep. George Camel, Ken, Ken Coleman, Coleman Eddie, Eddie Cullen. Eddie Cullen. Yeah. That's Everybody's right. doing a class. Everybody. Changing their lives. Love it. Very cool. So if you don't know what Financial Peace University is, you haven't been listening for very long because it's the best thing we do around here. It's nine lessons and you go through it with a coordinator in person or virtually online Mm -hmm. with a coordinator. And the coordinator is the one that guides you and loves you and holds you accountable and encourages you when you're scared and holds you accountable when you're about to screw up because you think you got this figured out. If you had it figured out, what are you doing in a financial class? (laughs) So, hey, we're here to help you. We know what to do. And we've led 10 million people out of debt and into wealth. Yeah. 10 million people have been through this class. Whew. That makes it the largest personal finance class in North America mm-hmm. ever. And I suggest, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can take the class, but I suggest taking it with community. Always got to be with community. Be, and you're going to be, be with the, people. You're the head of your community. Exactly. The Jade, the Jade community. Check it out. If you want to go through with one of the personalities, you can still get signed up. Financial Peace University at RamseySolutions.com or go to FPU.com, either one. Abby is with us in San Francisco. Hey, Abby, what's up? Hi. Good afternoon, Dave and Jade. So, um, so I'm currently on Baby Step 3B. And um, I just feel guilty if I budget to spend money on vacation. So, like, then I just never do. And I spend it on, like, other necessities instead just because I don't want to slow down saving money. And I just want to get past this block. I mean, that's if you're saving for a home and you're foregoing certain expenditures because you want to save faster, that is your prerogative, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially when you're in those first three baby steps. I mean, you're looking at the situation. You've got a set of scales in front of you, and you go on one side of the scales is a vacation. On the other side of the scales is I get to buy my house faster, I mean, and I'm choosing to buy my house faster. That's not guilt. That's just you made a choice. I like, yeah, I, I understand, but I also feel like... Um, I feel like this is going to continue once I do get the house. I'll be like, oh, I need to pay it off. And I just want to, like, I, I listened to what you said, and I you, I said you allocate a percentage to spending and enjoyment, but I just feel like I just never do it. Are you I married? Don't I don't know. I don't. Are you married? No, I'm single. So this is... What do you make? I make 120 
What are you talking about allocating for a vacation that you wouldn't do? Uh, maybe like 2500 or 3000 and it will go up as my net worth increases, of yeah. course. So I, th- I think the point is this. What you need to do also is to put uh, actual you, – you're dealing with feelings – which are okay to admit we have feelings. That's not a bad thing. But you need to put the actual numbers to it and go, okay, if I spend two grand on this vacation, how much does it really damage my goal of setting a house? Mathematically, okay? I mean, I've already saved 50000 I'm probably going to save another 40000 or whatever the number is. How much is 2000 really going to blow mm-hmm. it up? Mm-hmm. Now, if you said I'm going to spend twenty grand on vacation, then I would say, well, let's back that down. You know, because it's probably going to use up a whole bunch of your savings. But usually if you put actual math to it and go, is this really keeping me from hitting the goal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. And then that's going to help you with all the other stages as well. He seems like a formula driven guy or like a I I just go go in steps. And I feel like he just needs to almost like he said, he just when the time comes, he's got to make it part of his plan. Well, allocate a Mm non-damaging percentage of your savings to enjoyment. Yeah. Not house. Not house. And a non-damaging percentage. It's good for the mental health to get away every once in a while. So so add, add that to the list. All right, let's go to Justin in Grand Rapids. Hey, Justin, what's up? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. So my question for today is um, my wife and I are on Baby six, uh, baby Steps uh, 4 through 6, and we just decided to tackle our mortgage and to get it out. Um, we have a couple of businesses that we have. Um, the house that we're living in is a duplex, so we have the rental income and that side of the business. And then we live off of my wife's full-time business uh, as a potter. And so my question is, how much do we allocate? We have 42000 sitting in the bank. How much do we allocate to throw at the mortgage and to get that out of here as soon as possible? Um, and then how much do we set aside for the two businesses of the pottery business and the duplex? This is interesting. So you've got, tell me how much money you have again. I was taking all of that in. 42,000. 42,000. Now is this. How much is owed owed on the duplex? Uh, Just under 300,000. And what do you make a year? Household household Uh, taxable income. About 50 after taxes and business expenses. And her business is successful. And why do you not make money? Uh, I'm a stay-at-home dad with our kids, and then I'm also doing whatever side hustles and remote contract work that I can on the side. Okay. And so her pottery business is making thirty-five thousand. Uh, it's making thirty-six uh, gross thousand, but the expenses are extremely low because it's just the pottery cost. Mm-hmm. Okay, you don't need an emergency fund for it, and we certainly don't need one for your other business. It doesn't make any money at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the uh, right, yeah, for me personally, but then it's mostly like how much do we have? Oh, the duplex. You said you don't need you don't need a in. huge emergency fund for the duplex. We just need to start working to get it out of debt. So you make fifty thousand dollars a year. You have a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and how many kids? Uh, we have two kids, four and one years old. Okay. All right. Uh, the thing that's missing in the equation that's glaring is your income is low. Mm-hmm. Your household income is low. That's the number that feels out of whack when I hear your story. Mm-hmm. So what's the plan? Uh, I have been working as many side hustles as we can. We've been working on my wife's uh, business every year. It's growing by about 50% of its previous year's income. It's only about three, four years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we're just working as <laughs> as hard as we can, as well as, um, you know, taking care of the kids and that sort of thing. Is there anything more that you can do to add to the equation? Uh, I mean, picking up more hours, more side hustles, that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, you know, I think that's what you got to map out here because that's a bigger question than um, the out of your forty-two thousand. You should set aside an emergency fund of three to six months of household expenses. You don't have any debt except the house, right? Correct. We are completely debt-free, Good. Um, Good. except for the mortgage, and we already have. Okay. A so, what do you think three to six months of expenses for your emergency fund, fund is? 
Uh, well, we have 18,000 allotted for our personal. Oh, in uh, addition to the 42. In okay, to that's the 42. good. That's so the good. 42 is just sitting in our bank in high yield savings account until we decide what we're doing with it, um, essentially. Okay, and we do we need that we any of that out. to grow her business aggressively? No, we we don't because it's just her and then. He does have one employee, but it's... Um, yeah, but if you double, you said it doubled in the last three yep. years. If it doubles again, you're going to yep. need some help. True, true. I mean, you yep. may need that another You may need another killing. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I'm just thinking about your situation and the money you have saved in your personal and the money you have set aside from this business money. I feel like I would keep... I would want you to have six months of expenses because of the nature of what you do. Yeah. I also would like you to sit on a large portion of what you already have saved from the business because you've got a duplex. And I yeah. feel like that could come with a lot of cost. Maybe you keep 20000 of it aside. Yeah, I think I'm going to put another twenty with that eighteen, and then throw the other twenty three at your house. Yeah. And But I think, you know, and make sure that you really thought out the pro forma for growing your businesses and where you're going to end up here. Mm-hmm because that you may need some of that money to do that with because I'm more concerned about getting your income up in this equation mm-hmm. than I am what happens to this little $20,000 towards your mortgage. Agree. This is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. Thank you for joining us. Jacob is next in Kansas City. Hi, Jacob. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jade. Pleasure talking to you guys. You too. Thanks What's up? My call. So um, I got a lot of moving pieces on my financial chessboard right now, um, and my wife and I feel like we're doing all the right things. Um, but we're also talking about having our first kid next year, trying, trying to have our first kid next year. And Yay! I just want to make sure that I, <laughs> thank you. I mean, we're, we're excited just talking about it, but, um, we want to make sure that we're prioritizing the right things to not only set up for sustained success through that life change, but also ideally maybe allowing my wife to uh, switch to part-time. She, she's an RN. So, you know, being able to go part time would allow for more time with the hopeful future kid. You're going to be a good dad. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. <laughs> You're actually yeah. thinking about it. Wow, who knew? <laughs> and um, yeah, very cool. So, what do you make? Uh, our combined no, you. income last year. No, you. Oh, me. Uh, <laughs> um, seventy-five to eighty right now. Okay. How old are you? I'm 27. How much debt have y'all got? Uh, other than our mortgage, nothing. Wow, great job. Can you live on 80? Thank you. You know, we hadn't fully considered that. Um, we we bought our house last year. Uh, I've been paying 
close to 200 extra per month straight to principal trying to, you know, pay down that, that mortgage early. Um, and you know, we just, I mean, we haven't been maxing our Roth IRAs. What does she so make? I have not maxed mine. Um, she makes 55 to 60. Our combined is about 135. So no debt. How much do you have left on the house? Is that your goal that you want to have that house paid off before she would go to part time or stay at home? Is that the goal or that's just what I you've been trying to do? I realistically don't think that's possible. Okay. I am just trying to get ahead of the curve and, you know, build a habit that will allow us to continue. I mean, we're already... Well, I, I think you're I ahead of the. We've been in it a year, so yeah. you know. Okay. You're ahead of, ahead of the curve. You're ahead of the curve in the way that you don't have debt and that you're on a plan, which is good. And you've got three to six months saved. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, we have about eighteen thousand in a high yield savings. Okay, good, good deal. Untouched. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Uh, what will she make if she goes part time? Um. That's the great thing. Uh, if she goes to night shift and she's finishing her bachelor's this December, uh, her pay virtually won't change. Well, there you go. <laughs> then there's not a question. <laughs> this but is a no brainer. It, it's not, but that's honestly, we were wanting to avoid that. Um, and so I'm wanting to avoid her working that. at all. I, no, avoid her having to work night shift. Oh, um, okay. Oh, I see. I oh, okay. see. Baby. Oh, that makes sense. I don't, yeah. I don't argue yeah. that. All right. So, what can she make if she works not working the night shift part time? Um, it it would be probably about a twenty to twenty five thousand estimated pay cut. So you guys remind, are remind me what she makes again. Um, fifty five to sixty. Last time. We okay. So let's call it. let's call it forty. Okay. And you make eighty. That's one twenty. Start living on 120 now and have babies. Mm -hmm. Go. <laughs> Ready, set, go. Okay. <laughs> easy. Awesome. It's, it's easy. I love these calls because he has options. He's made it to where he can sit and decide, do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? And in this case, it's really cool because I kind of feel like you thought, Jacob, that we were going to lay out this plan why you know as to where you, you can't do what you want to do but you've set yourself no, no you can do it up you can do in everything a fabulous you way if you want to live on 80 she can just quit that too which they could do i mean they just have their house payment it's what the ramses did yeah and it wasn't 80 i can tell you that mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and if she wanted to you know, also 38 years ago but yeah there's that but yeah after a certain period of time maybe she wants to go back to work again maybe she doesn't yeah you know make sure, you keep, make sure you keep those certs up if you're a nurse for sure mm -hmm. if you go to the trouble to get that keep those certifications yeah. in place and his income is going to go up over time as well yeah, absolutely you guys have done great you've done great so yeah if everybody waited till they could afford to have kids they would never have kids facts so, man you know, that it's facts. just um and the best thing ever happened to dave ramsey's babies except possibly grandbabies <laughs> if I'd have known how great grandbabies were going to be, I'd have been nicer to their parents. Okay. Sarah's <laughs> with us in Minneapolis. Hey, Sarah, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Cash is king. That is dumb. <laughs> love Booyah. it. Love it. Love it. How can we help? Uh, so I'm calling because my husband and I, um, we're on Baby Step 2. We're hammering out um, the debt as we make extra money. I'm picking up extra shifts at the hospital. My husband uh, plows snow in the winter, so he makes every time doing that. And all of it's been going to debt or things that have come up that we could cash flow. Um, but right now we're wondering if we should sell our townhouse and um, take that money, pay off school loans, fully fund our emergency fund, and... Um, just rent until we could save up the 20% for a new home. What do you owe on the townhouse and what could you get for it? Uh, so we owe about 100 on the townhouse. And the last we checked was a couple months ago, and they said we could get around 230 for it. Mm -hmm. And school loans are 70000 So have you priced out if you were to, you know, go from your living situation now to renting how is that going to change your monthly payment? Um, the rent would be a little bit more because our mortgage is low. Um, but if we didn't have any debt, because the only debt we have, we put our camper up for sale and then we have school loans. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully our camper will sell. We're like 
just praying it does. What will it sell for? Um, we'd be. What are you asking for it? Um, we're asking twenty three for it. Okay, and how much do you owe on it? Twenty twenty. Okay, so it's not going to help with the school loans at all. No, well. You just get rid of the payment. Yes, yes. So we get rid of the. Yeah. What's the, your household income? Payment. Uh, we make about one hundred and thirty a year. Keep the townhouse. You haven't been doing okay. this very long. No, we have not. No. Yeah, you just got started, and you but, realize this is hard. Yeah, it is hard. Uh, yeah, we paid off about thirty-two so far. Yeah, and then when you sell the camper, you're gonna pay off another twenty-three, and then you make one hundred and thirty, and you only got seventy left. Just knock it out. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, we we were hoping that uh, we'd sell the camper, but if we sold the townhouse, that money could pay off school loans, fully fund our emergency fund. And yeah, and then, then you're out of the real estate them. business, and you got an expensive rent. Mm-hmm. No, I'm going to sit in the townhouse, let it go up in value while you clean up the rest of this mess. Exactly. Okay. And, and townhouse is not your problem. The camper is we were... a problem. Oh, for sure. That's why it's for sale. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were kind of thinking what you said, but I don't know. The appeal of not having any debt and the appeal of doing you know, this fast being able to save for home. and easy. Yeah, it's not fast or easy, that. either one. And it's not the smartest choice, even money-wise, because like Dave said, you're in the real estate market, which is where so many people want to be. And if you just sit on that property long enough, it's going to be worth something when you're actually ready to go and buy a full-sized house. And right now, I think what Dave said, man, Dave, that's so true. It's hard to pay off debt. It's hard to walk through that process. And I think a lot of times when people get into this, they're looking for What's the quick fix? What can I sell? How can I get out of this fast? And although wanting to pay off your debt fast is a good thing, you've got to think about what you're selling when it comes to your house, if it's really the wisest choice long term or not. In this case, I don't think it is. I think they've got a good income. And I think if they put the pedal to the metal, they can pay off their debt quicker than they realized. It's fun when you see all the information and you go, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And you got all this enthusiasm. And then you go about three months in, you go, crap. Yeah, this is hard. Work. hard. I'm more picking up extra shifts at the hospital. Yeah. We're not going out to eat. Tired. I'm tired. This is hard. The kids are whiny. Yeah. This is hard. Yep. It is hard. But you know what? Over the scope of your life, the two years it's going to take you to get out of debt when you sell this camper, it's really not much. Mm-hmm. It's very hard, but Sarah, you got what it takes to do it. I'm proud of you. You can do this. This is The Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us, America. Jade and I were just out at the commercial break. If you want to and you're coming through Nashville, stop by and watch the show. We do it on the glass from 1 to 4 Central Time every Monday through Friday. There are two of us Ramsey personalities sitting in here doing the show. Um, it's sometimes like watching ugly paint dry, but it's, it's, uh, you can come and we would love to have you. There's usually just a handful of people out here today, but there's usually 50 to 200 folks come by. The coffee is free. The cookies are free. And I got to talk to a young couple just now when we were out there getting our pictures done with them, said, you changed our life. Well, of course we didn't change their life. We just told them how, Mm -hmm. and they changed their lives. That's what we do. We tell you how, and you are the hero and you get to win. You get to go slay the dragon. We just give you dragon slaying instructions. And then you have to go kill the dragon. And you can do it. And we'll show you how. And we have. And thank you for that, by the way. If you're happy with the dragon slaying instructions, you've you've (laughs) liked this show so far, we'd appreciate some help. Uh, Subscribe to the show. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button or follow button uh, or whatever is appropriate with the type of podcast you're on. Um, Make sure it's dialed into your car radio. If you're a talk radio listener, thank you for that. And this preset is done there. Just number one preset. That's where you put it right there. 
push that memory button. Some of you don't even know how to do that. I was going to say, do the, do the cars still have that? They name? still got it, I promise you. And the uh, might not have a CD player, but they got that. <laughs> and uh, in addition to that, of course, we'd appreciate it if you would share the show, share mm -hmm. a link or hit the share button if there is one, or just tell people where you're listening and have them come join us and leave a five-star review. Those help with the algorithm on the internet as well. Uh, one stars aren't helpful. If you don't like the show, why are you spending your time here? That's a good Go question. somewhere else and just move on. Mama said if you ain't got anything nice to say, don't say nothing at all. There you go. There's a plan. So you leave us a five star, share it, follow it, subscribe it, whatever it is. And all of those things help us a bunch and help us help more people. We appreciate that very, very much. Dixie's in Savannah, Georgia. That's apropos. Hi, Dixie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, um, so my mom, um, she's 59 years old, and she's going to be trying to get into retirement soon, but she doesn't have anything saved for retirement. Um, she currently has about 20 k left on her mortgage. She has student loans. She has 18 k on her How much her in car. student loans? That I'm not too sure. How old did you I say, 5'9 or 6'9? Five nine. Okay. Yes, sir. It, could and, you guess um, how much she had on her student loans? If you had to guess, uh, maybe about thirty-five thousand. Okay. We'll call it um, that for discussion purposes. How can we help? Okay. Um, so my mom, her mindset is: you're everybody is going to be in debt, and there's no way around it. And I've come across you guys for uh, maybe about a year now. I had the Total Money Makeover book. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to offer her to read it, but she's not she's not a big reader. Um, so every time I get a chance, I try to sit down with her and talk to her about different things that I feel uh, would be beneficial for her. Mm -hmm. And she'll sit and she'll listen. But I think maybe because in her mind, I'm young and I'm not wise and I'm, I'm not I don't know what I'm talking about. She'll listen for a few minutes and then she's like, oh, you know, I don't think it's that you know, the best way for me to handle something. So my, my question to you guys is how could I help guide my mom to better set her up for retirement? I'm sorry. Th th this sucks. I, 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 I hate this for you. You know, you, you're the kid and you've got hold of this thing that, you know, can help her. And she just, yeah. she, I'm just going to be honest. She's still in that childlike phase where she wants what she wants and she's going to do what she's going to do. And I'll be honest with you. You're not, I hate to tell you this. You're not going to be the one to convince her otherwise. Probably true. Right. We call it the powdered butt syndrome. Once someone has powdered your butt, they don't care about your opinion on sex or money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so she doesn't she doesn't think yeah. that she's headed towards calamity. Clearly, if she's retiring now at 59 with or no. Or if she does, you think it, she doesn't believe there's hope. Yeah. So, yeah. Dixie, what I and the only luck I have ever had is one of two things. Um, number mm -hmm. one, you can't talk to her about her situation at all. That will not work. You've tried that. obviously. OK. okay? What you can talk about is your situation. Mm -hmm. and your feelings. You know, Mom, I used to believe I was going to die in debt. I thought I was going to be in debt my whole life. And you know what? I'm almost out. And I did this stuff, right. and it made me feel so good. And it's been hard, but it's been worth it. And it's the first time in my life I've got confidence about money. My hope factor is so high right now. But, boy, I used to really think I was never going to be able to win. I thought I'd be in debt my whole life. And, um, man, Mom, it's just a lot of fun. All you talk about is you. And mm -hmm. pretty soon she'll catch herself bragging to her friends. You know, my daughter, Dixie, she's getting out mm -hmm. of debt. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as she starts saying stuff like that, she's going to go, hmm, I wonder if I should. But you right. can, you could, it is not, it is never offensive for you to talk about you. Okay. But, um, you know, if, uh. I like, I got a guy in the, in the, the on our company here that lost, uh, he, he's one of our, uh, software engineers and he lost like 60 something pounds and i mm -hmm. went up to him i'm like man what in the world that's amazing <laughs> i mean you lost like a backstreet boy i mean this is crazy <laughs> you know and he's like yeah. yeah i said man i'm so proud of you and his shoulders kicked back his chest stuck out mm -hmm. how'd you do that oh, i ate less it's amazing and he didn't come yeah. up to me and go you know dave you could lose 25 pounds 
You'd feel a lot better, Dave, if you'd get out of the donuts. I'm not oh, in the donuts gosh. anymore. But he didn't come up to me and do that, right? He just came up to me and he stood there as this walking testimony that his new way of life is causing him to be able to feel better and be healthier. Right. That's a wonderful thing. The second thing, other than you talking about you, is if you know someone that she respects in the area of business and money, you might talk to them because she might listen to them if you put them on her. Right. So Uncle So-and-so has always been, no, you know, Harry, he's always had money. He's good with money. Well, go tell Harry to go talk to her, right? What do you think? Right. You, what do you think she'd say if you said, "Hey, mom, I, I found out about this financial peace university class. I'm going to take it. Do you want to take it with me?" What do you think she'd say? I feel like if I was taking it and I offered her to go, I feel as though she would go. Um, yeah, but you got to be real careful not to talk ever during the whole class. Say anything yeah. about her. You don't say. You just say, "I'm doing this for me." And at the end, except for encourage her. Yeah. But never right. like, Mom, you got to get this yeah. straight. It's like, Mom, you- <laughs> you're going to, you got, you better get desperate. No, you don't, you are not her accountability. No. That will not work. It's like when you take a okay. friend to church and the pastor is speaking, right. you don't go, that's for you. Yeah. And that's for you too. Yeah. <laughs> you He's talking not- to you. Can you hear him? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? You can't do that. Right. It's just sit, be quiet. And that's it, you know? That's a good point. That's very good. (laughs) You know? That's very good. I think that's what you, that's what I would take away from this. I would, I'd say, mom, I'm I'm signing up for Financial Peace University. I've got to get a couple of things right. You know, I've been listening to the show. Hey, you know, I've got two free passes. Do you want to go? I'd appreciate it if you go with me because I think you'd be, I think you'd be an encouragement to me. Oh, that's good. Right. That's good. I like that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but don't you dare say a word about her stuff. That's right. If she brings it up, it. you just smile and nod and say, "Mom, I think you can win." That's all you can say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can't right. say, that, you know, you can't think that way because it doesn't work. It just yeah. doesn't work. Right. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, well look, I appreciate that. Yeah, this is tough. I, I'm proud of you for calling in. I'm proud of you for getting your own situation intact. That's exciting. Yeah, good for you. And uh, hey, Thank let's uh, Austin. Can we give them Financial Peace University? Let's uh-huh. do it. We'll give it to you for free. Now she can't turn it down. Oh, well, there you thank go. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, let's 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 do it. Call back and tell us how it goes. Yeah, we want to hear when you're debt free and how, mom's winning. And everybody's on the same page now and all that. Yeah, it's it's you know it's weird though that when we're talking with family, we feel like we can bypass the persuasion step and just go straight to the "you're stupid" step. <laughs> yes. You yes. know, and you got to persuade family like anybody else because they're grown ups. They get to do what they want to do. That's true. You have to use persuasion, especially if they're your elder. Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah, yeah. You know, for sure. Ah, that puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Jenny is in Orange County starting off this hour. Hi, Jenny. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Mr. Ramsey. Thank you so much for taking our call. Sure. Um, I just wanted to uh, say, first of all, thank you so much for your show and for the advice that you give. Um, thanks to you, you've helped us to be out of debt. Our home is paid off. Wow. And um, um, yes. And Good for we'll you. Way to go. So, so 
<laughs> so thank you. You're a hundred percent debt free. Baby step seven. Yes, sir. Wow. Way to go. Whoop, 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 yes. whoop. What's this um, house in that, Orange yeah. County, California worth? Um, I think if you were to go on uh, uh, websites, it would probably list at about between one point four or one point five. You're so, yeah, amazing. So incredibly grateful. <laughs> Way to go. Um, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Um, our question is, we're both in our mid-50s. Um, like I said, our home is paid off. We have no debt. And then we're fairly new Ramsey followers, and we feel like even though we've started a little bit late towards savings for retirement, we're maxing out in terms of our 401k, uh, backdoor Roth, uh, beyond 15%. Um, but we have about $25,000 discretionary beyond the savings. Uh, beyond our emergency savings, and we feel like we've put off for so long some non-urgent house repairs, um, uh, fencing, uh, maybe a possible car purchase, replacing a nearly 30-year-old refrigerator. Talk to us about guilt-free spending now, <laughs> because we feel that um, it's, when you think about retiring in Orange County, it's seems like the cost of living is just so high that um, should we just be constantly saving towards it, like the way we've been trying to be out of debt? Or now can we take a deep breath and start putting some money into non-saving? I think that you can take a deep breath. I think that you've done so, so, (laughs) so very well and that you need to internalize that. You've done well, you've paid off your debt, you've paid off your home, and you're in your mid-50s, and you're doing just exactly what you're supposed to be doing, which is now you are able to chunk more money into retirement, and you're doing that. Are you maxing out those accounts? We are. We've already maxed out for the Roth, uh, for our IRAs. Yeah. Uh, we did do as much as we can for mm-hmm. our 401k, and we're even doing backdoor Roth yes. because we feel we have how, extra to throw at it. But how much do you again, have in retirement savings right now? Um, uh, we were starting late right now in cash that we have invested. We have about 150 but my husband is works for the state. And has about could count on about six hundred and thirty for a lump sum payout in lieu of a pension if we were to choose that option. So mm-hmm. total, we feel we could have about seven fifty. And our okay. And your household is income is what? About a hundred, short of a hundred, closer to ninety five. Okay, so let's call it a hundred thousand dollars a year, and you have a two and a half million dollar net worth, and you're in your fifties. That's called buy a new uh-huh. refrigerator today. <laughs> Go buy a refrigerator <laughs> and today. Buy, buy buy whatever one you want. <laughs> Anything you want. Yeah. I guess we're thinking. Oh my gosh! When we still have about, we'd like to have close to about a million dollars before y- you're we gonna have. You'll be fu- yeah. You're gonna have. You've got okay. the six hundred fifty. Look, yeah, yes, one hundred percent. How old are you? Fifty five. We're in our mid fifties. Yes. Yeah. So the house is going to go up in value. The current amounts you're putting in are going to go up in value. Uh, the pension is going to go up in value less, but it will still go up in value before yeah, he cashes it out. Mm-hmm. But the uh, all of that's going to continue to increase. And so, you know, when you're 65, you're probably looking at about a $10 million net worth at the current track you're on. Okay. It yeah. doesn't feel like it. I but. know. <laughs> I, 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 this wasn't a feeling. This was mathematics. Mm-hmm. Have you ever sat down and just played with a investment calculator just to see how the numbers go? We don't actually, and I'll be honest with you, we are very, very late to investing. That's our well. That's why I want you to do this. I want you when you get off the phone. I want you to just Google, go on Ramsey Solutions. I don't want you to go on a spending splur. You didn't get elected to Congress, okay? You're not going to go crazy, but buying a refrigerator is not going to mess you up when you have a two and a half million dollar net worth, okay? Buying a better car is not going to mess you up. Putting some money into this and updating the house a little bit is not going to mess you up. All of that together is less than a hundred thousand dollars, isn't mm-hmm. it? Refrigerator plus car plus home repair is less than a hundred thousand. Yes or no? Did I lose her? 
I think you might have lost her. I think I lost her. Well, it, I'll answer your question. The answer is yes, yes. Dave. And yes, and it's gonna, gonna break. Okay. It's not gonna break her world. Yeah, she's gonna be just fine. Play with an investment calculator, people. If you've never done that, it is so good for your mind because we're sitting here telling you the numbers. But to see for yourself what happens when you put certain amounts away for certain periods of time, it's just good for your brain to see that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, again, the normal process is that you move from unaware of how stupid you've been, me, (laughs) I remember that process myself, to going, oh, God, I'm the dumbest human on the planet. I've messed this up. I'll never recover. I've got to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And you go crazy Mm -hmm. for a period of years, gazelle intense, Mm -hmm. beans and rice, rice and beans. You're totally game on. We're We're not going on vacation. We're not eating out. We're getting this mess cleaned up. And because your body is running at that rate, your metabolism is running at that rate, then it's hard to slow down. When you come through that mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and because when you come through being debt free other than the house and then you come through getting the house paid off, you look up and you go, oh, wow, wow. And, and you're breathing a little differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, then it takes a little while for your emotions to catch up with the actual reality of your new math where you've ended yes. up. Yes, because that old person, it's like that old person still lives inside of you and you have to persuade them that things are okay now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, and uh, it's weird because you had to persuade the stupid person earlier that they're not okay. Yes. You know, (laughs) right? like this sucks. And you're like, I'm okay with sucks. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. Be stupid. Don't be stupid. Get with it. Go, 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 go. Clean the mess up. But then when you get the other side of it, you got to look up and go, okay, what's the math telling me? That's right. I can afford to go on vacation. What's the math telling me? I can afford to upgrade the car. What's the math telling me? I'm getting rid of a 30-year-old refrigerator to Please. Please do it. Please. God, that's awful. That was terrible. This is The Ramsey Show. Shaw Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Debbie is with us in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Debbie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? My husband and I have two grown children. Our daughter is married and rents a home independently. Our son is also grown, but he lives with us, but he does pay rent. They both would love to be able to find homes of their own. They've been unable to do that because of the market and just their personal finances. They would love to live close to us as we would love for them to live close to us as well. So in November, some land came available, some acreage came available very close to us. And my husband and I bought it. Our home was paid for, but we used an old HELOC that we had there to purchase the land because we didn't have enough cash to buy it outright. So since then, the rates on the HELOC have more than doubled, which means our payment has more than doubled. Um, the kids would still, we all still feel the same. We'd all still love for everybody to be able to build or do something out there on that land. But financially, they're just not ready. So my question is, do we refinance this? Because the land is paid for, but now we're back in the mortgage situation. Um so do we refinance it? Do we roll it into a fixed rate mortgage and just work at paying it off or do we sell it? Wow. What is the land worth? 
Um, probably about two hundred thousand. How big is your HELOC? Uh two fifty. Why did you borrow fifty more than the land was worth to buy the land when the house was, was paid for? That was just that was a like a business expense. And the land may a be worth more than that. Explain, I'm sorry, a business expense? What do you mean? We have um um a handyman service and the truck that we used died and so we did use it for that. Okay. So you bought a fifty thousand dollar truck that you couldn't afford. You bought a fifty thousand dollar truck that you couldn't afford, and you bought a two hundred thousand dollar piece of ground you couldn't afford. Could we not afford it since our home was paid for? You couldn't I afford. Mean, you didn't have the money to pay for it. That mean, by definition, that means you couldn't pay afford it if you didn't have the money to pay for it. Your your business is not making enough money to justify a fifty thousand dollar truck. You know how I know that because you didn't have fifty thousand dollars. Yes, we did. Why did you borrow money then? Taxes. Taxes? What's taxes mean? <clears throat> well, you ha I mean, if we have no tax deductions, then we're paying more and more and more and more in taxes. Do you not know how a tax deduction works? If you write off $10,000, it saves you $2,500. You have to give the bank 10000 to keep from sending the government 2500 You don't go in debt to create a tax deduction. That's trading a dollar for a quarter. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you need to sell the land. So we've talked to the kids about this land. They don't. Well, get, they don't get a that. vote. They're broke. Okay. So we just need to say, sorry, we made a mistake. We're going to sell it. Yeah, we That's can't, right. We, we because can't, they can't uh, afford to buy houses. This whole this whole thing that you guys have concocted, not, it, it's not working. It's not real. Yeah. It's not real. You've gone into debt for this. You've got bad practices. And then it's all on this dream that the kids are going to one day build houses on this land. But you've said they're not ready to. No one is ready and financially able to do any of the things None that of you're you speaking are. about. You're not. And they're not. And so this is a wish. It's not a it's not yeah. a realistic prognosis. And if, I, you, if you were sitting on three or four million dollars and you wanted to play this out. Then I would just question whether you're being an enabler for kids that aren't handling money well. But mm -hmm. beyond that, we don't even need to get to that because none none of the three of you have the money to do this deal. Uh huh. And I'll tell you what the next step was, Dave. The next step was they would have financed those down payments for those kids if they could. Yeah, that's where this is heading. That's where it's headed. It's heading worse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Got to so, let it go. I'm sorry. Uh, I would not have uh, a mortgage on my home for a piece of land. Ever, but I for sure wouldn't in this situation because it's not going. Th this family compound dream is probably never going to happen, and if it does, it's ten or fifteen years from now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just not. A, it's not a process. You, the kids are going to be much better off to let, to build themselves a self sustaining life without mommy and daddy doing it, and just live nearby. That's right. Uh, all and of my kids live within, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes of me. Um, but they don't live in my backyard. None of them would want to probably. But um, Well, there's a certain amount of pressure that she's that they're placing on the kids. When you say, hey, I bought this tract of land, then there's also this, okay, I guess family that's compound, what we got to do. I've, you know? I've, I've, got, I've worked through several family compound issues over the years, and I don't want one. Because here's what happens. Divorce. Yeah. And now the ex-daughter-in-law is your next-door neighbor because your son lost the divorce. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's terrible. Yeah, that's not good. Mom, you know, uh, we got an offer to make a half a million dollars a year more in Seattle. So we are leaving yep. Charlotte. That's what I'm saying. And uh, guess what? You sell that house to who? A stranger. Yeah. In the family compound. And how and much And some of those strangers are feel? strange. Yeah. Strange strangers. And you get a strange stranger as your next door neighbor. Right. And then now, now, you know, Thanksgiving really tastes different. Now I'm just telling you that these things don't end well. I, they're, they're, some people pull it off, but I'm, I've just seen all the messes and that's if this worked and if you guys weren't broke, Debbie, but y'all are broke. It doesn't work. None of you have got the money to pull this off. You couldn't even buy a $50,000 or you could buy a $50,000 truck, but you didn't. So by the way, take the $50,000 from your business that you had to buy the truck with and pay down the home equity loan so that when the land sells 
it pays off the rest of it and put the land on the market. I don't think mama's going to do that. I don't think she's going to do it either, but it's the right thing to do. It you is. shouldn't have called here if you didn't want the truth. Because we love you so much. We do. We want the best for you. We're going to tell you the truth. Yeah. We're get rid of that land. Devastating truth tellers. <laughs> Tim's in Boise. Hi, Tim. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Jade. Hi. Thanks for having me on. Sure. What's up? Um, my question is, my wife and I signed three-year contracts. We are both veterinarians. Um, we work for the same business, same privately owned business. And our contract ends in about 12, 13 months. It's been a pretty toxic work environment, been a really rough two years for us. So we're planning to not re-sign. Mm -hmm. And we are 50% of the vet force at our clinic. So Do you know where you're going to land? At this point, um, we have a couple ideas a little closer to family. Okay. Oh, so you're uh, going to make a move from a different city? Yes. It okay. will it'll be a move across the state. Okay. And you think you can, um, you're going to open a practice or buy into a practice or what? It's probably just get more associate jobs. Uh, my wife wants to go to part-time so she can spend more time with our daughter, and I will probably get a full-time position as an associate. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah, so, so what's your question? question? I have question I have is how do we go about when and how to tell our bosses we're not planning to resign? You know, they have quite a bit of power complex to where we're concerned that they're going to make our lives pretty miserable if we tell them too soon, but we don't, we want to be ethical about it. You know, we don't have yeah. to necessarily. I don't make my decisions based on them. I make my decisions based on me. Okay. And what I do is I treat a business ethics is answered by one thing. Almost always do unto others as you'd have them do unto you treat other people like you'd want to be treated. If the roles were reversed and you had a team member that thought you were a jerk, what would you want that team member to tell? When would you want that team member to tell you? Right. To, the answer is today. Okay. I, would, I, would, I would sit down with them before the week was over and say, this simple. We're planning at the end of our contract to move back and be near family. And so I wanted to give you as much notice as I could so that we could be as helpful as we can be in the transition. Okay. That's simple. This is you being classy. They choose not to be classy, then you may have to make a decision to leave early if they're going to be out of control. Because I'm not going to be abused in a work situation. Uh, you take that contract and use it for toilet paper, I'm not going to stick around. So, but hopefully you can create a classy situation. But this is about you having class, not about mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't control what they're going to do. And they're probably going to act up, let's yeah, be honest. kind of know they're going to. That's why we're leaving. Jade Walshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Well, the stock market's been rough lately. It's been up, it's been down, and it's basically about where it was a year ago. But it was a wild ride to get to even. Uh, the facts are, if you invest $200 a month from age 25 to age 65, you'll have between a million and $2 million. No, that's not too good to be true. That's based on the long-term average return of the S&P 500. Now, if you're not 25, well, that's okay. You can still get started. A huge predictor of investing success is that you actually invest. <laughs> so get a pro in your corner to help you get started. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. Our SmartVestor pros are people that have the heart of a teacher, do things the way that we teach around here. They don't work for us, but we recommend them. They'll drop down a, uh, a list of the Smart Vester pros in your area. You can meet with all the different ones and decide which one you want, which one you uh, match up with the best. You pick. RamseySolutions.com slash Smart Vester. They'll guide you through the ups and uh, the downs of the market. Louise is in New York City. Hi, Louise. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. 
Hello, Dave. Thank you very much for taking my call. Boy, I sure need your advice. We'll try. How can we help? Okay. Well, let's just say in the past, I'm 68 years old, and right now in the past, my investments, anything I ever did was, let's just say it would make you cringe as far as money goes. However, at this age in my life, I'm about three years from retirement. I mean, I can retire now. I'm working. I have Social Security and a small pension. I'm taking all at once. The question I have is this. I have a small mortgage on my house and a car that I'm leasing. Those are really the only debts that I have right now. And in my bank account, let's just say 125 I want to pay off the house and then start putting that money into like the 401k for these next three years. But people are like every time when they see money around here, it's like, no, 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 I can invest in this. I can invest in that. So I'm not too sure what I should do. Should I just wait till I retire and then pay off my house? Why do you want to wait till retirement to be free? Um, the question is, and here's the other thing that maybe I'm just old school, don't know, really, honestly, ignorant. I worry about the income that I am having coming in right now, working full time, collecting Social Security and a small pension all at once, putting money in the bank. Then I won't have anything to claim. Just me. On your taxes? Yes, on that, on anything. I mean, does that matter? So then I would have to really make sure so that I am not paying extra. I would have to really sit you, down. You're with not claiming good. anything now. You're not itemizing. You're taking standard deduction now, aren't you? I believe so. I'm yeah, claiming I think you are. You're, you have a small mortgage and a car lease that's not deductible. The mortgage right. is, the interest is. What's the balance on your mortgage? Right now it's seventy three thousand. And what's your interest rate? Uh, four point two. Okay. So four times seven, so twenty eight hundred bucks, is your annual interest. You're not claim. You're not claiming that. That's not enough to be your your standard deduction is probably fifteen or eighteen thousand bucks. You're taking standard deduction, so you get no tax benefit whatsoever from this house mortgage. Okay. okay. And you certainly so don't from the – and car, and car leases aren't deductible. Right. That I, that I know. So by paying this off – You and just then don't my give in- the bank $3,000 a year in interest, which would be kind of nice. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> how much but is in your how, saving? How, how much is in your account? How much money you got? You said you had 100 How much? 125 uh, Right now I have 100 and 125 Pay off your mortgage and your car today. All right. All right. How's that? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Breathe that in. What's it feel like to have no payments? Oh, it sounds good. Yeah. You know, now, what is, now what are we going to do? Just, We're rich now because you got all your income to start investing. Okay. That's the thing, though, with the investment because everybody I meet wants to take the money and put it here, put it here, put it lock it up for three years. Lock why it up why are you set. wanting to meet with people like that? <laughs> I don't know because that's who I seem to run into when I go to my well, bank. Well, just, just and, keep running. You know, <laughs> Every time they see my money, they want it. Yeah, just bounce, ba- just, just bounce on that. <laughs> you need to get online and get go to Ramsey Solutions and find one of our smart investor pros so that once you've gotten okay. all of this paid off and you're working full time, you're going to invest 15% or more because now you got your money freed up and you can start really packing okay. away on your retirement. And as you know, what are you working two more years? At least two more years. I'm going to be going to Bible school. So then, you okay. know, Paris Bible. So. I just want to be able to, when I do that, well, I'm going to do it part-time, and then eventually my second year I'll be full-time. Now get, get a Smart Investor Pro in your corner, and don't do what they say. Learn from them and do okay. what you say. Nobody okay. gets to tell you what to do with your money, not even me. And I'm good okay. at it, but well, not even me. You get to decide. You get to decide. I'm, te- I'm teaching today, and I'm giving you an opinion of what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. I'd be debt-free by the end of the day. I'd pay off that car, call the lease company, find out what it takes to pay it off, and be done with it. Call the mortgage okay. company, find out what it takes to pay it off, and be done with it. And then I would take the fact that I have no car payment and no house payment, and I would load up a bunch of mutual funds and build me up some money so when I go to Bible school, I got a little pad. Mm-hmm. And never lease a car again. Ever. Oop. Ever. And you don't need to borrow money ever again. That's right. You're now rich people. Kay is with us. Kay's in St. Louis. Hi, Kay. How are you? I am certainly blessed. That's the reason for my call. Ah, cool. What's up? 
Um, well, my family believes in generational wealth, and based on their amazing decisions, I have been blessed to get, get incoming over a million dollars. Wow! Wow! Who? Oh. Yes. Sheesh. I knew these people existed, but I've never met one. Way to go. That's awesome. Was Who was it, mom and dad or grandparents? Grandma was 94, and she passed away peacefully and was ready to go to heaven. Wow. And it turns out she had been saving, and properties were sold. And Wow. That's I something. can't even hardly imagine. How can we, how can we help you? <laughs> so the only debt I have is my mortgage. That's automatically going to go away. Good. Um, What's it? How much I is it? I do uh, like $100,000. Good. Okay. So now and we got 900 I, Okay. Well, it's going to be more than that. That's okay. at least what it is as of now, but there's other things coming in. So in excess of a million. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't want to do anything big with it. I Good. can't obviously put it all in one account. It's Good. over 250. Good. So I guess my question is, is what do I do with this for a year until I can actually absorb this and sit down and take the time? Like, um, high yield savings account. Yeah, I'd pop it in banks. some. High, I'd what? pop it in some high yields in some different banks. Okay. So you're not over the two hundred and fifty. Are you married? Yes. Okay. Well, you can put you can put five hundred in one bank. Right. If you got both names on it. So yeah, and the um, yeah, if you want to do that and just let it sit there for six months and then study and read and listen and learn and think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and study and read and listen and learn and think. And get some people in your corner that have the heart of a teacher. Again, like we were mm -hmm. just telling the last caller, the Smart Vester Pros. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm like you, I'm blown away by this. I think it's really exciting and I, I agree with Dave. You don't need to make any quick movements. You've got time to think about this. And I like what he said about listening and learning, because here's the thing. At some point, you are going to make a move with this money and you are going to get with an investment pro and you want to be able to understand what they're saying. You want to have be able to invert your say on it and say, this is what I'd like to do and have those conversations and know exactly what's going on. And until you know exactly what's going on, don't do anything. Yep. Yeah, just take your time. And so I, I end up with my investments, Kay, uh, in real estate that I pay cash for and in mutual funds that I understand. And both of those things, you probably got a learning curve on. And then you can decide if that's right for you. But that's why that's all I do. Mine's very, very simple. And, uh, and I ended up with a lot in both of those categories. This is The Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day, Proverbs 12, 11, whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits lacks sense. Benjamin Franklin said, he that waits upon a fortune is never sure of dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's I good. love it. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits lacks sense Oof. you know i'm it's one of the things that's distressing we had this labor crisis event the other night with mm -hmm. mike rowe and he and i were talking about work ethic in america today and the um the tic tac people have made quiet quitting and mediocre monday and whatever mm -hmm. else this chase to the bottom this race to the bottom with no ambition and no attempt to be excellent at your work yeah do as um, little as possible do as little as possible um and uh, let me just help you with that jesus did not write that that was Karl marx this was from the scriptures he 
whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits lacks sense. Jackie is with us in Los Angeles. Hi, Jackie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you. How are you two doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? I had a quick question. I'm in baby step three, um, and I'm a bit just a bit confused. So I know it's um, to invest 15% for retirement. That's um, four. And I'm a teacher, and they automatically take away 11% um, from our check mm-hmm. um, for retirement. So I'm kind of confused on what to – is that part of the 15 or is that separate? So technically, if you're – the money that they're taking out, that's your money from your check, right? They're not matching it in any way. They match 16% of that. So they match 16% of what you're putting in? Of the 11% they take, uh-huh. 16% of your 11%. Right. Okay, I see. 2%. So 2%. whatever they're matching, that's just icing on the cake, right? So you're still going to contribute 15% of your actual personal money, and then that 2% is going to take it up to, you know, 17%, and that's just fine. That's Think of it as a cherry on top. Do you get to control what that goes into? I don't. Okay. Yeah. The fact that you can't control it, I wouldn't I would want to put more than the total of 15%. I wouldn't I wouldn't count your 11 as the total. I'd count okay. it like I'd maybe count it like 9 and I'd want to put another 6 or 7 in something else where you okay. can control okay. the investment. Cuz if you can't control the investment, you can you can't control the outcome. That's true. Okay. Okay. And then I'm um, just quick question. Um so I'm trying to save obviously it's really hard over here, but I'm still trying to save for a down payment. Um what I Still, can I put like 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 six percent still and then still save on the side, or should I pause saving the six percent? Yeah, pause saving the pause saving the six percent. So in order, you would do baby step three B first, which is saving for your down payment. That's Mm -hmm. what I would do, and then go on to baby step four, where you're able to max out that contribution. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for taking my call. You're welcome. Thanks for calling in. Sometimes people do both at once and that's okay too. I feel like if you're going, this is the way my brain thinks of it. If I'm going in order and I haven't bought yet, I'd probably, I probably would not start investing. Yeah. But sometimes people think it's going to take a while and they're really upset about not getting their employer match or other things and they want to get started. It's okay if you do some investing or if you even do the whole 15 and Mm -hmm. you just save up your down payment in addition to that. It's all about how quickly you want to get your house. Exactly. Exactly. So any of those qualify under Mm -hmm. what we call baby step 3B, but I'm with you. My personal tendency is I'm just going to be, I'm getting her done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that you clarified that because there, there have been some folks who have said, well, you know, you have to do this first and it's not ne- that's not necessarily true it's really about what you're valuing most at that time yeah and how it's the sp- it, you're we're, bo- we're both valuing the investing mm-hmm. it's just the speed of which you're going to get to either one exactly yeah. exactly and some people are like i just gotta get a house so there put it go. on pause greg is in idaho falls idaho hi greg how are you i'm good how are you guys better than we deserve what's up good great um so Right now we are in baby step two. We have about 25,000 in debt, about 20,000 student loan. The other five is like a family loan. Um, we're expecting a newborn baby, so we pause that, and and we're just saving for the baby that's going to be due here in November. Cool. So my question is, right now we have, yeah, thank you. Um, right now we have a rental, a home. It's got a mortgage on it, and we're trying to decide if we should keep it and still uh, rent it out as an Airbnb, or if we should sell it and use the equity that we have in it to uh, pay off debt, uh, do the emergency fund, um, and then if it's okay if to do home renovations on our new home, like finish our basement and do a fenced-in yard, and then if there's still money after that, I was wondering what your thoughts are on a mortgage recast um, to do a lump sum payment towards the yeah. new house. To get the monthly payment down a little bit, because it seems like sometimes our monthly mortgage payment is like around 27%. And I know you suggest no more than 25% of your take home pay. I was just hoping to see what you guys' thoughts on all, on all that. If you sell the rental, how much is it going to bring? Um, so I talked to a couple of realtors to get some. They were thinking like, a rough number, three hundred seventy thousand, and the balance I owe on it is about one hundred seventy-five thousand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
How much do you owe on your current mortgage? Uh, so our primary mortgage, that one we owe two hundred and ninety-two thousand. Um, you know, I, I'm not opposed to selling this rental if you're not into, you know renting it anymore if it's causing you more stress than it is i mean you've do you do have some debt to clean up and you've got a baby on the way if that's something that you feel like simplifies your life and it goes along with your life plan i feel like that's a great idea um i think you want to sell it um a little bit <laughs> yeah because i think a brand new baby yeah. and an airbnb at the same time is enough to make me go crazy yeah, it feels crazy. <laughs> Those two things yeah. at once. And you, you, your wife is saying, I need to, it's some stuff fixed up around the house here, and you don't have the money to do that. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking about her and about the sure. baby instead of the Airbnb. And I think that's a good dad. How close is it to you? Yeah. Is it far? Uh, no, it's, it's like five miles down the road from us. So yeah, it's right here. I yeah. love the idea of you selling it and clearing out this debt and possibly having some left to, you said you could fully fund your emergency fund, pay off the debt yep. and mm -hmm. maybe still have some to put on your house. Yeah. Or, or, you know, dump some in a college fund, all yeah. those kinds of things. You're not going to have as much as you okay. think you're going to have, but you're going to have some and you got rid of the hassle factor while you got a brand new baby and life is good. You're clear. You can come back and buy rentals later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you didn't own this right now and you had 150000 in the bank, you wouldn't go buy a rental today. Right. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. So I'm just re yeah. reverse engineering on you here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jade's mm -hmm. exactly yeah. right. I, I agree with her. I, w I would just clean this up and you'll get you another rental. Yeah. You bought this at a different time in your life, a different stage in your life. Your head was in a different space. And right now you're right. in dad and a good husband mode. And you're thinking more about making sure all of the... The, the, the you know the fort is uh, secure uh we've got a fence around it all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff and yeah i like every bit of that i would do every bit of that be very careful don't overspend obviously mm -hmm. uh, we want to make this money right. go as far as it'll go but yeah that's definitely the direction i would go personally and then you'll get another rental later you'll save up and pay cash as you build wealth later on down through your financial peace baby steps process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love that plan now the business of he said recasting his no i would not mortgage. recast. Do not recast. Recasting a mortgage is refinancing it to lower the payment based on a new lowered balance. We don't want to lower the payment. Right. We want to increase the payment. We want to get out of debt, not stay in <laughs> debt longer. Recasting means I'm going to stay in debt longer. Yeah. No, recast. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. Re yeah, because that's just changing the payment. It's not changing the interest rate. It's well, it, not might change the, it might change the interest rate. Well, if they will recast that at the current rate, that's They'll, yeah. char they'll charge a fee for doing that usually, but I wouldn't even do that. No, thank you. No. Yeah. Nope. We're, the goal is to pay it off. That's right. Not to not pay it off. And that, that's the whole process here. Mm -hmm. Hey, good question. That puts us hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. What's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.